Hey everyone, my name is Tom Kraus. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to spin up a Linux machine on Windows in order to do some uh, bash shell scripting. We can use the bash shell scripts to automate a lot of stuff inside Linux. Uh, we're going to run it on Windows so you don't need to get too deep into it and you don't need to reinstall your system with Linux in order to get access to it. I'll briefly go through the whole lot, get you set up and run a very basic script and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So first of all, we need a nice terminal. So the terminal that comes at Windows is called a command shell, PowerShell. Not particularly fond of either of those myself. Coming from Linux, it's got much better terminals. But Windows does have a terminal, Microsoft has a terminal. So if you go into the Microsoft Store and we search for Windows Terminal, and we look at the f first one here, make sure you go into it because you always want the one from Microsoft and not the one from some other company. So install that. And once that's installed, then you are presented with this nice um, terminal where you can have multiple tabs. It gives you extra features. You, you can connect to all different things. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So let's take a look at uh, connecting to our Linux machine. But before we connect to anything, we've got to make sure we have one. So there's a command called WSL, Windows Subsystems for Linux. And we do minus minus LIS this. And we see that we have one Linux system install called Ubuntu. But you can install more than one, or if you haven't got any installed, you can always do WSL minus minus list minus minus on. Right. It gives you a list of all of the available ones, and it's very easy to install it. You just do WSL minus 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 install, whichever, Ubuntu, and that will install it. I already have installed, so I'm not going to do that. So if you want to start it up, again, just type WSL. And now we have a Linux shell. Um, also, you can just hit the drop down list here. And if you've got one pre-installed, it will um, launch it for you automatically in a nice shell. So let's use this shell. It's very like the Ubuntu one, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go into our home directory. I think I have a training directory. And inside here, we have nothing. So thing to note is a shell script can do anything that you can do on a bash command line. So if I echo hello, then if I just vi, let's see, we we'll call it script101.bsh, I call it Dot .bsh, so I recognize it, uh, that it's a bash shell script. So first thing we need to do is uh, type in echo. Hello. So we take the exact same command, and then we type in bash, and we run the script. And it does the, it does the exact same thing as you do for the command line. Now during this session, I'm going to do a few shortcuts. Um, you can take note of them or ignore them. One of the ones I like a lot is the clear screen one. So if you hit the control key and L, clears the screen it's pretty handy okay so let's start building up our script um first of all we'll open up we will we'll modify the file we already created okay and we delete this we we'll start with some basics right so hash bin bash. this is called a hash bang and um, there's the hash and there's the bang and then you have the bin bash this is so the system knows what um system knows what coder to use in order to run the code below. So this could be Python, Java, Bash. So we're going to use Bash here, okay? Not Bush, but Bash. And our first one is we're going to say, okay, what is your... So we've already done the echo bit. Your name. So, echo, what is your name? But we need to be able to read that name into a variable. So what is a variable? A variable is like a, a word that holds information. So let me show you what I mean. So read name. So this is now a variable. One thing to note is using VI, or a lot of modern kind of um, command line text editors, they're aware of code. And if I reload this code, you can see that it's got syntax highlighting engaged. So it knows that this is what this is. It knows that knows that uh, what this is and it also see where that's still red I mean, it thinks it's a comment because I didn't close off my uh, quote so now we've got read a name 
So that's the variable. So what is your name? Read. That will read from the command line. Whatever you type in will go into the variable name. Okay. And we can just we can display this back by going echo. G hello. And then you, you know, dollar. You have to use a dollar sign in order to um, display a variable. So the way that the bash shell works is if you've got a dollar sign in front of a word, it notes that word is variable and it tries to read what's in it. Um, okay, so let's manage your tasks. So we're going to make a task manager here, a very basic one. Okay. Um, so we understand what the echo does. So let's just run this program. Let's do really bash script and we run it. What is your name? My name is Tom. Hello, Tom. Let's manage your tasks. Okay, let's manage our tasks. First thing to note is I want to use functions here. Functions give me the ability to take pieces of code and reuse them later on if I need to. It also allows me to, say, um, block out a, a lot of code from running. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Hang on a second. Let's, let's, let's create a function here, right? So I'm going to call this function called get name. And then we're going to do it. I'm going to use quotes. And then one of the things is with syntax inside Bash. It doesn't really care about the syntax. But uh, well, as it's some sort of a coder or a developer, or someone who just writes scripts, you should care about your syntax. And it should be in a such a way that it's easy to read. A couple of things you can do is it be for every function, just to add a comment, hash sign, and then the text afterwards is a comment. And uh, get username. Just describe what's going on. And then for each line, we each line we add an indent of two spaces so because this is a function here called get name then everything inside that from the opening bracket to the closing bracket should be indented so we know that it's part of the top level one so because this function is now set up let's run the script again and see what happens oh nothing happens why does nothing happen because i need to specify the function to run so now i have to do it like a command so get name and we run it again. What is your name? Tom. Hello, Tom. Let's manage your tasks. Excellent. So let's add a way of putting in our tasks into our list. So get tasks. And then we... Okay. So we will go... We'll create a loop here. So while true do... Um, we've done... So this is our loop here. So basically, while true, do until done. So while loop is a loop that uh, keeps going until a certain condition is met. Right? So it could be while one is not equal to 100, and then you count up till eventually it eats 100, and then the while loop is not working. But the while true loop will always be true. So that means it will never end. So while true, do, that means run this loop forever. Okay? And what are we going to do inside this loop? Well, we're going to because this is again inside another piece of code we've got to indent it two more times so we'll echo and enter a task and then we're going to add some or and um, I'll put to finish and then we'll close off the brackets so enter a task or quit to finish. So we're going to do read again. So I'll read task. Okay. So now we're going to present the user with another option to enter a task. And if they are finished entering tasks, then they can put in the word quit to finish. Okay. All right. Um, so now we have to put a condition in. So the quit kicks in. So if someone enters in a quit, then it quits. Okay. So we go back again. So we go back again. And we go if dollar, I don't forget the dollar task, because dollar indicates a variable. If dollar task is equal to quit, then so just to explain here, right? You notice that all of these um, conditions and loops, they all follow a symbol format. So you have the, you have the keyword, and then you have um, a condition. 
then you have this colon, a semicolon, and then you have either a do or a then. It's really important that you follow this exactly process or it won't work. I also have the ifs, so you see these spaces here, these spaces are important, don't miss out on them. This space here isn't too important, so I don't have a space there after the do. Let me fix that. Okay, so if sign is quick, then do. So one, two, three, four, and then we, because we're in another block of code, we got to win the end again. Break is a keyword that just breaks out of the block. So if this task is quits, then break, and then you're out. This will break you out of the while loop as well. So it'll break you out of this whole chunk of code that we're in. Okay. So now, tasks plus equal. So now what? Don't confuse this. This variable is different than this variable. This variable is an array. So an array is like a collection of variables. So variable one, variable two, and um, it has indexes. So the first variable is called a zero, the second variable is called a one, two, three, four, five. I'll try and show you a bit more detail as we go through this. So basically, every time this loop runs, and you type in something to tasks, it will add whatever's in task to the variable tasks. To the array tasks. And we have a little comment here, echo key task added it to Q. We'll capitalize this as well. Then do not this done closes off our while loop. So basically while true do enter a task, read the command line, if the task equals quit and break out of the entire thing, move on to the next one. And then task kind of skin. Done. Okay. Let's give it a go. See if it works. Ah, we need to close off the function, which we can do. And we should be good to go. Okay, let's Let's try it. Get task. Just notice it's the S is missing. Get tasks. What is your name? Tom. Hello, oh, Tom. Oh, do. Don't. Leave. And quit. To exit. So far, so good. Let's, let's have a look. So let's add our final task. To our final function to print out our tasks. So we call this one print tasks. And let's just uh, put in the close bracket because I forget. So indent one, indent one, two, echo, echo, your tasks. Capitalize this, okay. So we've got a for loop here that iterates through the array and prints out each one. So let's have a look. For i in, so we need to do dollar. Indicates there's a, a variable coming. Now, this curly bracket indicates that the variable name is not straightforward. It's not necessarily going to be just letters. There could be some other funky stuff going on here. And there is. Um, there is an ex exclamation mark. And then we have our tasks. And then we go, and then we have this funky thing going on here. And then we close it off. And then we close it off. Okay, let me explain this, right? So tasks is our array which we got up here, remember, it's a new one. So this indicates the number of items in the array. So this is also an indicator of the array. So for i in the number of items in the array, then we do 
echo dollar so so we go with i plus one dollar dollar dot so what am i doing here so again this is indicating there is a variable coming up but sometimes you don't even have to give the variable a name you can just give it a function so here we're giving it um here we're just taking the value of i and adding one to it okay so then we go dollar and then we're going into our TAF tasks and the thing that we're doing here is that we're going to put in the value of i the value of i. We're going to put the value of i. So y could be one, two, three, four, four. Depends. For every for every um, instance inside the array, there will be a loop. So if there's four values inside the array, you'll have like one, two, three, four. Literate four times through it. Now it always calls the first one zero, second one one, which humans can be a bit confusing so what we do here is that we we're actually just going to give it a, the name of the first task which is going to be the, the task plus one so the zero will actually be called one because the first task is called zero it's just a bit weird okay let's close that let's close that iteration let's copy that paste that delete that so let's see let's see how our code goes so Oh. Do don't leave. Quit. Ta -da. So you see? Do don't leave. It prints out all of our tasks and it looks pretty good. I mean, we can definitely build on this and it can be used for storing your data into a file. I mean, it's very easy to write all this stuff into a file or even a database if you want to take it to the next level. So play around with the script. Make sure you understand this. Make sure you get what the functions are, what, each, what the read is doing, what the uh, the loops are doing, what the conditional statements are doing, and what the this this type the for loop as well. Maybe consider why you would use a for loop over a while loop or a while loop over your for loop. It's all pretty good stuff. Uh, very interesting. And yeah, I hope you got some value out of this. And uh, my name is Tom Cross. Like and subscribe. Talk to you all later.